What's up peeps and poops and welcome back. So today we're going over pregnancy and post-pregnancy with cannabis. So strap in, but not too tight because you got a baby on the way. Let's go. Alright, so today we're actually going to be going over pregnancy and childbirth and post-birth with the use of cannabis in the system. It's been a hotly debated topic, so I figured I'd just go ahead and cover it now. There are obviously going to be potential risks associated with cannabis use while you're pregnant and after pregnancy. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and tackle all of that. A lot of it's going to be um, significant in the fact that it concerns the medical community. There's current scientific evidence on this topic and it's pretty limited right now. So that being said, there are several studies suggesting that prenatal cannabis exposure may have adverse effects on the fetal development and long-term health outcomes. So there's a study conducted in 2016 that found that prenatal cannabis exposure was associated with a higher risk of low birth weight and small for gestational aged infants. There's another study in 2009 indicating that prenatal cannabis exposure was linked to higher likelihood of preterm birth too. And with these and other studies, it's been shown that THC can cross through the placenta and reach the developing fetus, potentially affecting its development. It also shows that the endocannabinoid system plays a crucial role in the development of the fetal brain and can have long-term implications. There's also been more research to suggest that prenatal cannabis exposure may impact the child's neurodevelopment. A systematic review conducted in 2009 found an association between prenatal cannabis exposure and an increased risk of cognitive impairment and behavioral problems in children. Another study conducted in 2002 suggested that prenatal cannabis exposure might lead to deficits in executive functioning during adolescence. And along with this, it may have an increased risk of attention problems, impulsivity, hyperactivity, and poor academic performance. And we also got to remember that when smoking marijuana, which includes both joints and pipes and blunts and everything, it exposes the fetus to harmful chemicals like toxins and carcinogens that are present in smoke just like in cigarettes. And even using cannabis infused edibles and oils, though you're not exposing the fetus to smoke, it can still lead to exposure to THC and its potential effects on fetal development. Jumping in the middle is always to ask you to please like, you can subscribe. And if you ring this bell, I promise you, you'll get notified. You can buy me some coffee because if you can't tell, I'm like really tired and I need to wake up. Also, if you want to, my Patreon's right back here. You can subscribe even for the $1 membership and you'll get access to all of the pulled audio without the intro, the outro, and this middle segment. So you can just have straight facts. I love you guys. We're going back to cannabis. Moving along, there's even been some looks into using cannabis during childbirth. When it comes to using cannabis during and after childbirth, it is essential to consider the potential impairments that it may cause in maternal cognitive and motor functions. And we all remember the study that was conducted in 2015 by Grant that demonstrated the acute use of cannabis impaired several cognitive functions such as attention, working memory, and decision making. But all that aside, I'm going to go over the uses that they're considering to use cannabis for childbirth. So with cannabis being known for its analgesic properties, they're now starting to consider it for pain management during childbirth. Some women may choose to use cannabis as an alternative or complementary method to traditional pain management techniques such as epidurals and opioids. And now that we're past that one, we can focus on the next important thing, which is breast milk. <laughs> Don't break out your Oreos just yet. Um, we still got a little bit more to talk about. So the passing of THC through breast milk is very well documented. THC can be detected in the breast milk for several hours after cannabis use and has been shown to accumulate in the breastfeeding infant's body. This was done in a study in 2017. And of course, this exposure may have long-lasting effects on the infant's developing brain, potentially leading to cognitive and behavioral issues. A study done in 2018 found an association with breastfeeding infants that has THC in the milk and neurodevelopment problems at one year of age. One year. But even with all this aside, there are some individuals that argue that cannabis use during pregnancy or while breastfeeding provides various benefits such as pain relief or relaxation. So let me leave you with this. Pregnant individuals or those who are breastfeeding should engage in open discussions with their healthcare providers. This way you can discuss any concerns or health conditions. Professionals can provide appropriate guidance and support, recommend alternative methods to management symptoms or discomfort, and ensure the health and the safety of both the mother and the baby. Which should be our top priority at this point anyways, right? 
So I hope that, that helps you guys understand pregnancy and post-pregnancy with cannabis just a little bit better. If you have any questions or concerns, file them down in the comments. You know that I will answer you as always. Um, I love you guys. Remember what I talked about mid-video if you wouldn't mind. And I will see you in the next video. Until next time, deuces.